Welcome to She Rebel Radio, the podcast for high-performing women leaders who want to unlearn conventional rules, leave prestigious careers, and launch businesses of significance. Each week, She Rebel Radio brings you insights and advice from women entrepreneurs who transformed their prestige prisons into daring entrepreneurial success stories. Now, here is your host, Lulu Nins. Welcome to episode 65 of She Rebel Radio, 2020 Reflections with Kathy Caton and Camille Pearson. Kathy is the founder of Brighton's first legal distillery, famous for their product, the award-winning, super premium and infamous Brighton Gin. You can also find Kathy live as a BBC radio presenter, where she previously freelanced for a number of years as a broadcaster, presenter and producer. Camille is the founder and managing director of the award-winning Float Spa, founded in 2014. Camille has since opened both a training academy, runs business courses for the yoga and wellness industry and offers coaching to help facilitate change through health and wellness. Ladies, it's amazing to have you here after this incredibly tough year. How are you both doing today? In one piece, I think, which is a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. Good. I know it's been a busy year. This is a busy time of year anyway, so I'm super grateful to have you both on She Rebel Radio today. And I would love to kick off with, you know, rounding up this incredibly tough year. I'd love to know what your initial response is to the shutting down of premises-based businesses was back in March now. Camille, you had to shut down the float spa. And Cathy, all of the businesses you supply with Brighton Gin were closing um, around the country and around the world, in fact. So what were your initial responses to that I'm uh, happy to I'm happy to to jump in um it's this year has been beyond uh exhausting it's been terrifying it's been exhilarating in in places as well uh certainly I mean kind of it also feels like it's been about 10 years long yet somehow yeah. it's only you know eight or nine months since uh since everything kind of you know shut down we were faced with uh it isn't an exaggeration to say that that we were thinking about is this going to be the death of of our business after so many years of you know stress and struggle and overcoming all sorts of things uh but never in any of our kind of you know disaster planning or different scenarios or business plans did i just it didn't occur to me to put down global pandemic as a possible no, uh risk to to things but it was certainly you know it was a terrifying thing when hospitality uh shut and uh, you know it's no secret that hospitality's had such a, a kicking over this year i have so much sympathy and empathy for anyone particularly a small independent trying to trying to run a, a hospitality business and when that closed that took with it 85 to 90 percent of our of our sales disappeared wow. overnight and um, and that was you know absolutely terrifying. And so you can see when you kind of think about that number, you can see that's why we thought this could potentially be the end of our business. Uh, yeah. However, I do also count myself as being really fortunate in that um, I have a business that we've been able to uh, spin in several different directions. And I suppose one of the advantages of being a a small business is that actually it is possible to be nimble overnight and go right. Okay, we're just we can we can change. Let's try this, this, and this in a way that maybe within a bigger organisation is is harder to turn around and do. Yeah, you haven't got all the you know kind of going up the ranks as well. And I know, Cathy, um, we were going to have your interview on She Rebel Radio back in March, weren't we? When this all kicked off. Oh, um, crikey! Back in the heady days of of March. Yeah, and it's I think that um, thing as well of. Uh, and again, kind of thinking back to the, it, it's hard to rem- probably for good reason. It's it's hard to to remember just what that felt like back in March with the uh, with the the vision of the business potentially, well, certainly having to be radically altered, but also at the time where there was uh, a lot of um, panic buying and stockpiling and things going on. And on one hand, lo- I was looking at, at business going, we've got all of this gin to sell to pubs that are closed and are going to be closed for who knows how how long but at the same time also going but we've got loads of ethanol here there's a shortage of 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 hand sanitizer globally actually we could be why don't we become literally part of the the solution uh and yeah and did what at the time it was kind of an emergency sort of you know community action 
So we, mm. by, by making, releasing not-for-profit hand sanitizer, and I can't believe that here we are in December and we're, we're sending them out still for people for stocking villas and stuff like that. It's just... What a year, what a time. Yeah, and as you say, it feels like it's been a long, exhausting year, but then March, in a weird way, doesn't feel that long ago um, as well. And yeah, the hand sanitizers, brilliant, like pivot and innovation there, um, Cathy, um, you know, particularly in that that time of great panic across the board and particularly for hospitality. Camille, um, what were your initial responses? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> obviously not for radio is the language that I might have chosen to use. Um, it was almost exactly the same. I'd spent near, you know, five years building this business that was solely reliant on people walking through the door. Mm-hmm. Um, so not being able to come through the door was a problem. I mean, we saw in March as it started to unfold. Um, I believe that I got COVID right at the beginning of March. And I took a week off and it was before all the symptoms and time off or anything was kind of put forward um, or notified before we knew the the extent of it, really. And I got lost my taste buds and things like that. I was quite ill with it. But then I got over it. And then it was kind of as I spent that, I spent a week at home kind of just sitting there watching this unfold going, we're going to not have people in soon and we're going to close. We need to put an action plan in place. Mm -hmm. So before lockdown happened, we basically started a full on plan of how we were going to turn our business around. Um, But yes, we are. We lost a lot of business overnight. Um, We closed the doors officially or shut the doors on the 20th of March. We were preparing for it. We had no government support. Our business insurance didn't pay us out, even though we had pandemic insurance but because the outbreak didn't happen on our premises and it was very clearly in Wuhan in China um we weren't eligible for anything so oh, if we didn't do swear on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. if we were not able to get anything in we needed to try and survive now the whole of March and April I was just basically in my head going what the hell I have experienced mental health issues a lot is how I built my business so when you have this unprecedented I hate that word issue of a pandemic which is unprepared unplanned unknown not in the business plan who knew to open a business in January a second business again it was all going swimmingly in the right direction and then everything changed so we flipped what we could and we asked our members to continue to supporting us We were very lucky that obviously we have a membership structure. So although people couldn't come in for a monthly float, for example, when we reopened, they could come in for four in the space of a few weeks. They could catch up. So people did support us, which was great. Yeah. Um, And we flipped all the yoga classes. I built my own because obviously I'm very tech savvy, not. Um, I built a member area and pre-recorded a load of videos, content for yoga classes before we shut and launched it to our members and said, stick with us because we're doing all this amazing stuff. Then with the power of Zoom, we then flipped as many classes online as we could. So therefore keeping an income for our teachers because yes, I've got front of house team, which are um, we could be furloughed. Um, I have 30 odd self-employed people that were not eligible for anything. Yeah. And so when you think about the bigger picture of all these people that are struggling financially is that we had to do something. So it meant that we were able to recoup some money and earn some money to then give back to the teachers. So therefore they could still earn something, nowhere near what they were earning before, but still something. Still something. So Camille, I know before we hit record, you said, you know, I haven't worked as <laughs> worked as hard as I have this year. Um and and uh, Kathy, does that uh, resonate with you as well? Well, I think uh, there's a couple of things that Camille said there that uh, that really kind of um, that that resonate. And I think the first is about uh, customers, and I'd say that it it is through the the support and generosity and kindness of of individual uh, customers that uh, that we're not only you know still here but we're able actually to kind of look towards actually do we think we're going to be able to survive this yes hopefully let's now plan plan for that um because those individuals people around particularly I say from you know from from Brighton and Hove and, and Sussex people have been absolutely amazing and they have uh, their support of of us means that we're still here which is incredible yeah. and i think the other thing as well is about our team the team involved so uh, our, we have a tiny, tiny team. There's only only five of us, um, and uh, one of the 
team needed to be uh, self-isolating. It's my mum. It's because she's 77. And that's yeah, I was going to say, doesn't your mum work for the team, Cathy? She does it. She before. does indeed. She's make, I've left her making, making 3,000 minis this very second. <laughs> um, but, you know, but that was, a, that was a big, that was a big thing because she absolutely, she loves working. She loves being, getting up and actually having something, you know, useful and meaningful to do. And it was, of the most awful, awful day when she left and went home and then basically stayed at home for, for three months. Mm-hmm. But the, I have to completely praise the, t- the, the team um, who totally just stepped up brilliantly and have stayed stepped up as well so I think it's it's really kind of it's shifted us as a as a business. Uh, I think there was that thing of going, of, of quite quickly having a plan and then but also being really up, more upfront with with everyone than I may have been before so going these are the challenges we're facing it's an incredibly uncertain future but if we're going to go down we're going to go down with all guns blazing who's in for it and uh, and other people were, were amazing and that also goes for our our freelancers as well who we work with who were very brave about basically have lo- losing their work from us in in March on yeah. the promise that as soon as I was able to we would be able to we'd, we'd be coming back to them which have done now which is amazing mm-hmm. and but also testament to them about taking on this this the the challenge of it all the kind of the financial and emotional challenge so I think to to kind of, kind of answer your question about the I've I've, I've always worked phenomenally hard at, at and everything that I've ever ever done, possibly stupidly, actually, you know that old the adage about being a busy fool, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My inability to say no to stuff means that I'm I'm forever scurrying around. But I've certainly worked differently this this year, and longer term, I th- I, now I can actually talk about longer term, which which three months ago I wouldn't dare to have done. It's fundamentally changed us as a, as a business. I think in probably in a good in a good way. Okay, that's that's great to hear. And how how is that a fundamental change in what way? Well, I think so so this is the time of year where usually uh we would not only be working 7 days a week making making gin and bottling it and delivering it but also doing tons of events, face-to-face events out sampling to you know talking talking to people try getting people to try try the the gin having the conversations about it um and obviously there is zero that and there has been zero face-to-face um event interaction really all all year i think the last time did something was it in at the end of february and uh so on one hand we're really missing that you know the the chance to talk to our customers face to face but on the other hand it's actually given us and me in, in particular I've had more time off this this year than I've had uh, probably for the last 15, 20 years because there hasn't been the chance to, you know, go out and have to do all those events and and that the feeling of we should be, one should, that terrible phrase, oh, I should be doing. Yeah. Actually, in a way, the whole, because the decision has been taken out of my hands or out of anyone's hands, it's been very you know, there's been no there's been no option to feel. I haven't been able to feel guilty about not going to do an event because the event has been cancelled. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. How about you, Camille? Um, are there anything that you've kind of been forced to let go of that's actually created space for? Yeah, I mean, I spent the past two years stepping out of the business in order to build the business, and so now we unfortunately had to let three people go, and uh, so we have reduced our team down to five, including myself, rather than we were eight before Mm -hmm. and um so I took the time I did all the work I've never done so much work during lockdown and the the emails and the um, I'm now an advanced video editor I've created there's 500 videos on our member platform we've created online courses for people to do who knew I could even do that I'd never even done it before so we learn a lot and it was really interesting what you just said Kathy is that I actually started to disclose more information to my team which I didn't ever do it was almost like it was mine and I need to keep the finances I don't know why under lock and secret but 
it, I started to like, discuss more things like where our profit margins were, where our break even point was, why we need to do this. And actually, the team have come forward and actually really surprised me coming up with loads of ideas. We've got like a team incentive, the 25 quid, they voucher every time they come up with an idea that they we implement. Mm-hmm. It's literally the amount of ideas that are flowing from the team because they feel a bit more empowered. It's not like I suppressed their empowerment beforehand. I'd always said, but because they've seen that I'm fighting and struggling and really like, effectively supporting them and how much we have supported them over the past nine months, they seem to be like really like flying with ideas and helping us rebuild. Yeah. And um, we got a little bit of grant funding. I'm actually sat right now in um, our bath bomb factory as I call it um and we have literally been making one of the teams like do you reckon I've made 500 bath bombs in the past few weeks because we're literally making so many bath bombs and we've created a little side angle of our business we had it done before but never at the volumes that we're doing now Mm -hmm. and um like one of the teams is like coming up with really crazy ideas and colors and suggestions and it's just really nice to see how like motivated they are to help rebuild because you know, it's funny, I said in July, we're in six months critical and then a three-year recovery and plan, our business plan, that's what it stated. Yeah. Um, and now we're nearing the end of the critical stage. Do I still feel we're in a bit of critical? That extra lockdown that we've just had obviously has nudged us a little bit behind, but it is all now about the future. And I am in a really strong position to say what we're doing. I took a load of time to just take a step back and look at what I was doing. I've done loads of trainings online and that access to things that I would never have been able to do. I've done conferences in America because I would never have been able to get there. So they've done it virtually. So there's been so many pluses of what I've been able to do. But as a business, we've had to just take stock, stand back and look at what's working. And the some of the stuff that we've implemented I don't think we're ever going to get rid of. Mm. Um, I love how much time saving things that we've had to do in order to be in a weird way, COVID secure. Um, And it's been really surprising because I think, I don't know if Kathy might agree, when you literally go grow a business, it grows and it evolves over time. Very rarely do we step back and just say, let me just take like a few days to step back and look at everything around. I mean, I'm a massive big picture thinker and always thinking I'm doing that but obviously not and this has been the biggest effective shock to the system but reshuffle of how we do things and we've just streamlined almost every process to make things speedier and quicker more customer centric even though it was before but even more so and yeah it's been really surprising there's a lot of learning and really good lessons we've learned Um, and I'm always Sorry, yeah. I say so critical is it, it that, that often that step back, two step forward, although you know being forced in such a extreme way, um, is is has been twenty twenty really. Though I also wonder if if that thing about being, I, I wonder if it's a, a thing about because. Uh, one of the things I've definitely learned over the last 10 years is that really nobody in their right mind would open their own business if they ever knew how much <laughs> is, is involved. And Agreed. Yeah, my parents were business owners. That's why I decided that was something I was never going to do. Yeah, and just how how uh, relentlessly relentless uh, it, it is. So I think there's, you know, already you got, there's, um, I think there's something about kind of the, there's an awful lot of, of, Tosh, that's the polite way I'll put it, you know, to kind of that can be spoken around the the entrepreneurial mindset. But I think one of the things about entrepreneurs is that thing of just keeping going when all good sense says stop um, and finding different ways of looking at things. So I think that thing of actually having this enforced break put on by by circumstances so far out of any of our control uh, is, um, you know, then I think it's really fascinating to see the different kind of creative entrepreneurial responses to it um and but also I think what's going to be really interesting this is and the reason I'm going to say this out loud is because I might make it true for myself the more I say it (laughs) is to make sure that the things that I've learned and resolved and discovered this year don't when things return to their kind of you know normal normalness and busyness and hecticness that I don't forget the really valuable stuff that I've learned this this year uh, because that would be a wasted opportunity I think you know I've, there's so much that I've realized I'm, I'm grudgingly b- 
beginning to not accept. Yeah, no, I'm gradually beginning to accept that actually it isn't possible to do all of the things I want to do. No. And what what, what kind of things have you learned and resolved, Cathy? Um, I think that that it isn't possible to do all the things that I that I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that uh, there are that I have to accept the, lim- the some of the limitations of resources, both both time and and financial. They're real things that I have to accept. Um, also, that uh, people can be amazing when you give them the the space and room to to be so, uh, and that thing of um yeah I think you can come back to what we were, we were talking about before about the kind of you know sharing financial information and stuff I think that's something I haven't done previously because I've been worried about I don't want to make anyone worry mm-hmm. uh and but actually in terms of that there's also the flip side is going actually if people know what's going on and know what the challenge is then they have a choice about whether to go right come on I'm going to do everything I can to 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 see this thing through because we know it's got a good long-term future so I think um by by sort of keeping some of that stuff to myself because I thought it was better for the team actually may not have been the right decision Mm. um yeah really powerful in terms of a lot of acceptance allowing um and yeah sharing with the team where the business is at and allowing the information to come from that because and and, uh, try always try really hard to you know share positive things we have a we have a good news channel on slack that try and have at least one good thing going into a, a, a day you know, and so but it but also I think yeah I need to just be realistic with people about some of the things that we're facing and also then people can give their input into it and their their kind of solutions to stuff as as well so uh, also I'm going to try and make sure that I have more time off there you go that's my other thing Love that commitment there. Yeah, more time off, more stepping back. Absolutely. Camille, um, how about you? What's been your greatest lessons and learnings that you'd like to move forward with? Again, I mean, the the team have been really amazing. I mean, my my team have always been amazing. So, I mean, it's not that they're not, they're even, it's almost like they're even more amazing, (laughs) Um, which sounds um, a little bit bonkers. Um, But even the wider team, like we have all these yoga teachers, massage therapists, and things like that and I probably my own self put up a barrier it's almost um when you deal with a lot of people in our industries everyone comes to our industry because of something that happens no one goes to kind of yoga school in 16 and then they or massage very rarely do they get into the wellness industry because they evolve into it it's purely because they change their life to get into it yeah I'm sure you know that maybe. um so it, they a lot of people come with like baggage I have my own baggage and I, it's fine to have baggage but I became very good at just putting a huge barrier up against the baggage because I just couldn't take on people's stuff yeah. and it's a big lesson that I learned years ago was to basically put the barrier up and always keep everyone at arm's length mm-hmm. um and whereas this year it's kind of I suppose the barrier came down a little bit and it didn't need to be so harsh yeah. so I've learned a lot about kind of personal behavior people's behavior understanding it I've done loads of trainings myself and it's just like learning to be I don't know like a better person not that I was bad before but you know it's just to kind of have a more softer side that was more empathetic yeah Um, because I'm great with clients but maybe a little bit less so with the team and actually having you know working health for leather to try and get them to earn some money I think it became more of a two-way respectful relationship and we worked together to rebuild this Mm -hmm. because this the floats bar isn't me and I could never run it I never wanted to run it and it just be me doing everything because it Mm -hmm. wouldn't work and actually having all the cogs more oiled smoothly and running perfectly you know what we've come back to is great I mean our clients have been amazing seeing some of their lives change even still whilst being on Zoom and touching base with them and all the stuff. I mean, the whole experience has been humbling to an extent because you are still connected in their homes, giving them, you know, some people live on their own and they didn't see anyone other than your face or the teacher's face during the whole of lockdown. And it was just 
heartwarming to be that form of contact. And then obviously when they could come back, then that connection was even stronger. Yeah. And it's that, you know, at time of, of crisis, us coming together and being uh, more connected and, and and connected as a team from both of you, it sounds like, you know, of that actually, you know, I can't do it all. And um, the team are there um, really supporting. Um, Kathy, what did you see from the Brighton Gin community? How how did they support you as a business? As in our, our customers? Our yeah. Consumers. Oh my God, they've been absolutely breathtakingly brilliant on all sorts of fronts so um kind of starting with the the hand sanitizer which i mentioned before so we did this as a as a not-for-profit thing which was a decision that made very early on which i'm really glad to have have made and it fits in with our you know, we, we already have this thing called community community spirit um which is where we can commit to to giving a proportion of our our stock to various kind of you know community and charitable causes through the through the large kind of Brighton and Hove focus because this is where we are with Brighton obsessives um yeah and the hand sanitizer was in partnership wasn't it with an aromatherapy local exactly yeah we, we worked with another uh distiller based in Lewis the incredible uh AS apothecary and one of the reasons why we worked with with her is because we'd seen there were some issues with some of the things that people were other distillers were, were rushing to release as part of the effort you know wanting to be helpful but actually uh you know we see, we saw some products released that were that were made out of 96.6 percent ethanol uh, which is neutral grain spirit which is just you really shouldn't put it on your skin well i was going to say kathy actually your hand, hand sanitizer is the only one that doesn't give me eczema Oh well, I'm very, I'm very, and I'm, and that's through the partnership working with uh, Amanda Sarin and her her team in in Lewis, where, she, yeah, she's a cosmetic distiller, so she makes beautiful, very, very uh, high end skin creams and skincare products. Because we didn't, what we didn't want to do was in our, you know, in the rush to help create something that then was going to be problematic for other for you know for for use because thought actually people might be using this for for a fair time they're certainly going to be using it on a daily basis much more often than they have done before so with her skill with using really you know lovely um botanicals and and extracts things that are actually good and nourishing for your for your skin meant that smells lovely smells lovely smells bloody delicious and also it makes me want to have a a roast dinner every time I use it because it's got <laughs> mint and rosemary and all this delicious stuff in it. Um, but yeah, so we buddied up with with her so we could be confident that the thing that we were releasing was not only going to be the right product to uh, totally kill all viruses, but also that it was be be really you know safe to use on your hands for mm. for, for multiple uses. And um, we did this under the title of uh, spray it forward rather than pay it forward. And the way we set it up was that uh, an individual could buy one off the off the website. And for each one that was sold through the website, two more would be donated to, to frontline causes. And people's reactions to that has been really phenomenal mm-hmm. and uh, and extremely humbling and I've, I'm not ashamed to say that I've had quite a few tears in the in the gin cave over the months with uh, people's support or support messages you know we've had people getting in contact saying I want to buy 30 of these through the website I don't need them I've got plenty of stuff but can you donate these to to frontline you know we want to help support frontline workers and we don't know how this is a way to help yeah um but also people have been so spectacular with sending uh, not only hand sanitizer but but bottles of brighton gin all around the country and we um always send those out with a handwritten thank you note and often we put if someone wants to put a gift, gift message in as well so they'll get a thank you note from from us and, and gift messages and so we're sending these messages saying mate i'm so sorry that i won't see you for your 30th 40th 50th we sent one out last week for someone's 100th birthday which is just like that's brilliant oh, have, that. have the gin on us that's you just have it on us um and lots of things saying I'm so sorry that we won't be getting together for your wedding this this year but it's going to be amazing next year and have a taste of of Brighton for the for the time being and that's just I've found it so moving um and that thing of people just sending lovely messages to to friends going I'm sending you 
I'm not I'm send, sending this for no particular reason just know that I'm thinking of you and I wish we could go to the pub and have a Brighton gin together and that makes me very kind of lumpy throated yeah. thinking about it but you know and on a business front that's kept us here here we are at the at the end of the year which is amazing but I think that kind of real one of the things I hope sticks there's a lot of kind of you know debate at the moment about what's going to be sticky behavior and what isn't what will disappear when when our things return to how we previously saw them as as normal but I hope one of the things that sticks is people really remembering how great their local suppliers and local producers have been so not just your local gin slinger but actually the greengrocer at the top of the road or the even you know the corner shops that have been sorting out food packages and stuff like that I just think I really hope that people remember how fantastic they are and also what a great feeling it is to you know to spend your money locally in the community and and keep that kind of coming around supporting supporting your own local community it's a virtuous it's a virtuous circle and I really really hope that that is a so many people have done that well, yeah, and it's highlighted the importance of local community um, in so many ways, hasn't it? In you know, in terms of time of a crisis, but also you know how we need to rely on those that are, are close by and near to us because we never know what's around the corner. So, yeah, completely. And it's made me think, you know, and I've it's I it's been a good poke up the bum for me as well. You know, it's reminded me that actually I do need to I need to get on my bike and go down to the open market and buy my fruit and veg there yeah. that isn't wrapped in plastic, that uh, comes from a you know lovely family family run stall on the open market. And I just need to make a few more minutes of effort to do that. And then not only have the warm rosy glow of having done something, you know, good for my community at the end of it, but also it's really good value as well. And that that money's staying within our local community. It shows us as well when we have that a little bit more time and can step back, we can actually, you know, have the time to make more conscious decisions, which are having a bigger impact, um, you know, on, on the bigger, you know, ecosystem that we are all part of. Um, so in terms of um, your businesses and the industries you're both in, how do you think things are going to change and move forward in 2021? Camille, um, if I can ask you. Yeah, God, we've got to be everything online still. Um yeah, it's obviously um, we can't. I said about uh, well, six years ago now, um, well being will be the buzzword in five years' time. Mm. Well, it kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> On a forced, uh, different note, I mean, we were picking up momentum in 2020, like the early parts of 2020, and actually, well being suddenly became a bit more of a focus. When we reopened in July, I did see a lot more people more conscious in looking after their own health. Mm -hmm. So from our kind of main core therapies point of view, from a floating point of view, from massage, massage actually got reclassified during this um, second lockdown, which is something that they've been fighting for for about 20 years even longer you know they've been swept up as a massage parlor and a massage parlor is not what a therapeutic massage is so that's amazing news for the industry yeah you know the infrared sauna as well these kind of therapies people are seeing therapeutic ways of treating themselves mm. so i believe that that momentum is going to continue yoga is tricky because obviously you know we need to be able to get back to where people trust multiple people to be in a room yeah. And, you know, we've gone from having 25 people in a yoga studio to nine, which. Is and without the adjustments as well. It's such a big part of yoga, isn't it? And not allowed. It is. And a lot of people do it on Zoom where they're not, they don't have their video on. So people are just, you know, there's this still disconnect. Mm -hmm. And I think time will tell to, you know, time hopefully will tell that we get back to effectively a better practice I yeah. mean it's great that more people have been able to do it online and things like that but I do think missing the energy from being in a room mm -hmm. with people practicing and also having a teacher there to look at you because yeah. no teacher can do adjustments from screen you can't see everybody you can't check and if depending on the angle of the camera you know it is there are issues but you know it's been the means to a uh, an end for the, the interim I just hope that from a yoga perspective we can get back to being in a room soon ish yeah absolutely and how about you Kathy moving forward oh Frankie, this is the absolute um yeah the the whole crystal ball thing I mean at, at the time of us 
talking hospitality has partially re reopened, albeit in a very, very limited way. There's a whole world of scotch egg and pasty being sold at the moment to enable people to go out and, ha and have a pint and things. <laughs> it, um, I think, so having been largely positive through our, through our, our conversation so far, I'm also aware that we're coming, and, and a lot of that is because we're, we're so beautifully, fabulously, hectically busy right at this moment, mm -hmm. but we're also coming up for so traditionally, this is the period between now and and Christmas and, and New Year, where uh, hospitality and then all of the the businesses that supply into them make their quids to last them through till March. Yeah, um, because there's just nothing happens in in January and very little in, in February, and I really don't know what what is what the beginning of the year is going to be like i mean on one hand maybe because people haven't been going out and going completely nuts for six weeks with endless christmas parties and socializing and stuff maybe people will keep you know wanting to uh drink at home drink less but drink better maybe mm -hmm. that's a thing that i hope for i sort of hope that people decide if they were thinking about dry January, if maybe they might just skip that for 2021 would be really useful. Yeah, um, they need to, they've changed it in Brighton, actually. They used to have the adult panto in January. That was my favourite night out to yeah. not have dry January. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, so I, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, and it's, I think we're, uh, we're sort of still kind of in, kind of coming back to one of the things that, that Camille was saying earlier, we're very much in survival mode, I would I would say, still. And I think will be until uh, March, April, till the days start getting longer and it gets warmer again. And hopefully also by that stage that a successful vaccination programme has happened and people are, are able to be out and and socializing safely again I on a personal front I really look forward to that day I miss spontaneity I miss going should we go for a drink or you know just let's go see a gig oh oh well how, yeah how much of the fun you know the fun stuff um has been has been cut out and I think it's really important as you said you know November is a massive revenue month. We had lockdown March for any business, hospitality in particular, is when, you know, the revenue starts coming in. It's the same with coaching um, often yeah. as well. Um, you know, people start, you know, it's the new new buds of spring. People start off with the new energy, which it's often not in January. And again, you know, lockdown, the two really significant revenue months for lots of businesses. Um, and Camille, as you said, six month critical three year recovery. Um, you know, businesses are far from through this um that, that's a good way of phrasing it, actually I might have to co-opt that that phrase because I think it probably is going to be yeah it is going to be looking at looking at that absolutely yeah because that six month critical is as you say Kathy the survival isn't it when you're just you know just making ends you know covering the basics um, which makes growth and, and stuff difficult completely and I think there's also the thing that while we uh and again much like like Camille we took fairly you know drastic action really early on in the year and kind of and just cut everything everything right back at everywhere we could so we were as lean as possible going going into it but I think also there's and I'm really glad that we did that although I found it personally extremely difficult to to do really really hard it's the hardest thing I've done actually in, in business so far um but also we're at the stage where I don't think there's anything else to cut away without fundamentally altering the business and we still need you know I want us to be set for for recovery and ultimately longer term we still want to grow and scale but in an ethical and sustainable way and and I think that we that there's nothing else that can be cut back that then wouldn't affect that that longer term plan I Absolutely. agree with you on that that's exactly where we are there's there's not much else and um, you know for us actually we have a big January, February and March are our three biggest months of the year. Mm -hmm. My biggest concern is, is unless we can have multiple people in and get back to being busier, it sets us up to fail for the entirety of 2021 unless we get January, February, March up and running. Mm -hmm. So we know that and it is heart-wrenching to know that we cannot get our yoga studio at the capacity where we are because that effectively sets the bar for the entirety of 2021. So it is a concern 
but we are so very fortunate that I don't put all my eggs in one basket and we are not just a yoga studio. We are more than that. And because we have so many different revenue streams from the multiple different treatments, I just hope that we can at least coast with what we're going to be losing on yoga um because we are we're, we're always losing on yoga now um within the rest of it yeah um and that's the only benefit from sh- structuring the business the way that I have done way back in 2014 when we were building it and that's having that you can tell I'm a marketeer um throwing all your eggs in one basket has never worked so it's like multiple channels multiple touch points multiple everything so therefore it, it effectively future proof does and gave us a stability so if one thing fails for a month then the other thing can carry us up and that's what we managed to do for the whole of, whole of covid and also like previous years but now obviously the gaps are getting bigger and um yeah it's quite painful but you know we will i'm determined to survive it and that's mm. the main main thing is you know i'm sure there'll be challenges in 2021 and let's hope it's not. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let's hope it's just one of the standard, you know, standard yes. ones. Yes, oh, it's got to yeah. be an improvement. Um, so I would love to know, um, you know, what is next for you both in 2021, but how importantly, how can we support you? Um, how can the listeners of She Rebel Radio support you both as a business? Cathy? Oh, crikey. Well, I think one of the things that, uh, and, and again, touching on the conversation that you had, um, you're having right at, right at the beginning of, of this is that, um, one of the new opportunities that's, that's presented itself is the whole world of me being able to talk to potential Brighton Gin customers virtually. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I've spent the last 18 months trying to, to, to set up um, a, a trade mission to Japan to go and talk about Brighton Gin and do various Meet the Buyer events and, and present to, to people. And uh, for extremely obvious reasons, that's, uh, that's not happening. Mm-hmm. But what has happened, which is amazing, is that we're able to do it all virtually for the cost of me getting up early in the morning so I can do it at a time that's that's suitable for uh, for potential buyers in in Japan and that is a that is a whole new world of of opportunity that just that nobody did before that is now completely possible that so there's there's gin that's already in the British Embassy in Japan waiting for, for to do a virtual tasting with on Thursday I'm doing a, a gin tour with our um importer in hong kong and i'll be able to show them the gin cave they will be able to see everyone in their woolly hats and coats because it's so freezing in inside making gin and that kind of thing was just not possible but before so i hope that there will be all sorts of opportunity there beyond the looming hell of brexit there i've said it but i won't say anything else about it but there will but i hope that there's other you know much further flung opportunity um but i mean in the meantime i would also say that, also say that if uh if you are a gin lover or know somebody who is i would love it if you were to come to brightongin.com and buy some gin office so we can send it overnight to people around the around the country local deliveries are all done by us on on push bikes and e-cargo bike mm. and that would be fantastic and if you don't drink gin that's fine we've got hand sanitizer and socks and face masks <laughs> and books lovely and always with a, a Brighton Gin love note as well as we've heard you know how it. and we really mean it as well we are we're so unbelievably grateful for the for the support of our uh, customers and of the community I, it has made me so proud to be part of of the glorious city of Brighton and Hove there is nowhere else I'd rather be in this country than than here oh thank you so much Cathy and Camille um, well, can I just say, um, if I don't drink much, but if I do drink gin, it is always Brighton gin with orange because I have to have orange in my gin and your gin just goes best with the orange. Um, just saying. Um, you can anyway. come again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's um, on a side project. But um, actually what I've done is I've spent, uh, I've done so much training myself. Um, so in order the business will run itself and I will always run the floats bar. I absolutely love the floats bar. I love everything about it and the business will continue. Um, the one thing is as a limited company director that wasn't eligible for furlough and couldn't pay myself for nine months of the year, um, I need to 
needed to create an income stream for myself. Yeah. So all these trainings I've done over the past few years, I finally put into practice and I will finally crawl out of my shell because I like to hide in the shell very often and offer my own coaching. So from 2021, um, you can be coached by me on behavioral change and behavioral science, all the stuff that we did the webinar on, um, but even more advanced levels. And I will help offer myself out a day a week, which is quite scary to do coaching. Yeah. So I can start to at least effectively future proof myself because the business will survive. And if I can earn a, sub a subsidiary income or an income full stop from doing my own coaching, then, you know, we're not so reliant and the coaching obviously can take place anywhere in the world. Um, I'm coaching people at the moment and some of them, a lot of them are in the States and things like that. And being able to do that via Zoom and email is just unheard of. So who knew that Zoom was going to be a thing this time last year and enable us to connect on so many different levels. Yeah. So that's where I am. I'm really excited. You know, we're selling bath bombs if you want Christmas presents that are not gin. And um, we make Epsom salt bath bombs at the floats bar. We stock local suppliers. So we're very eco-conscious as well, Cathy. All our um, products are made packaging free and paper-free, plastic-free, hate plastic here. And um, I was going to say a loads. bath bomb with a gin in the bath with some orange gin. Sounds I was like actually brilliant. That we could do that gin. now. I was actually because we do um, some. We actually have CBD bath bombs that have got orange in them, and I was thinking that would be the best concoction. You buy a bath bomb, a CBD bath bomb, and a gin, and you put all that in together. It would be the literally ultimate bath. Yeah. Oh my god, I could easily do that now. To be honest, yeah. take the afternoon <laughs> off, gin in the bath, perfect. <laughs> Oh God, I was just thinking that. I'm, I'm staring at them with the orange in and I'm like, oh my God. Um, but yes, so that's what we do. We've got loads of gift vouchers available and we are obviously open again. Um, we are reduced capacity and we'll be at reduced capacity for the foreseeable until um, uh, we can maintain, well, until the effectively social distancing gets relaxed a little bit. Um, but we are a safe place to come um, and it, we're great for Christmas presents, gift vouchers, Bath bombs are the best thing ever. Great for kids and adults and like. But yeah, it's yeah, all good. and that whole the gift voucher thing definitely because if it's, I think that's a great way for for um people to support their local independent businesses. Just it's a you know it's in, injection into their business now, and you know that you're going to get your lovely treat at some stage later later on at a time that's both you know convenient and safe for for everyone. So that's a really great thing to do. You know, in a in a literal pay it forward. Yeah, definitely yeah, we a did big a message there to support the local and independent businesses. Yeah, we did do a pay it forward campaign um, during lockdown, actually. Um, I didn't mention it, where we supported um, for every float purchase during lockdown, we donated one to the NHS staff um, or essential workers. We had people that were working in Sainsbury's and people that were applying. And I just didn't think it had to be just for NHS. I thought any essential worker that is putting their selves at risk and working flat out we rewarded all them as well so that was a really nice thing that we were able to do during lots of first lockdown amazing thank you so much for being with us um have a happy christmas and um look forward to supporting you in 2021 it's been amazing. a pleasure and a privilege thank you so much for asking me i've loved it likewise i've loved it too it's been lovely Thanks for listening to She Rebel Radio, the podcast for high-performing women leaders who want to unlearn conventional rules, leave prestigious careers, and launch businesses of significance. She Rebel Radio is executive produced and hosted by women's advocate and coach, Lulu Mintz. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. You can find Lulu Mintz on Facebook and LinkedIn at Lulu Mintz and on Instagram at Lulu Mintz underscore biz. Until next week, keep rebelling against the rules and designing success your way.